Welcome, girls and ghouls, to the Enfuego Films Halloween Special, in partnership with FEMA Boys. <laughs> Enjoy. All right. Legend has it that there's a small Korean village where a Japanese man moves in, right? Yeah. And weird things have happened to the people that live in this village. They start turning into like zombie-like creatures. And they're bringing shamans, and, and they try to out this demon, but it turns out that he's not the biggest threat. Wait. Isn't that... Isn't that the whaling? Yeah. I, I think it is. You know what that reminds us? We have, like, ten movies here to recommend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Alright. Well, I guess we might as well start with my... Number five pick, The Wailing. This movie, it's just a great Halloween movie. It's a, one of the best horror movies I've ever seen, honestly. It's, For sure. It's just, it's just amazing. It's, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, my number five spot is American Werewolf in London. This movie is a cult classic, drive-in classic. It's exactly what you and your friends want on Halloween, let me tell you. I'm coming, I got a classic here. Got Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're talking about classic horror movies, this is an '80s juggernaut. <laughs> I mean, Wes Craven comes in hot for sure with with this just dummy movie. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's it's everything you want for Halloween. If you haven't seen it, this should be like the first one. Yeah, for sure. All right, my number four spot. Let's get this in the light. The Fly by David Cronenberg. This is my favorite David Cronenberg movie, and David Cronenberg is one of my favorite horror directors. So. If you want to see, like, a creature feature, if you want to call it that, it's The Fly. Alright, my, my, my number three pick yeah. is a classic. It's an Italian horror movie called Suspiria, by more Dario Argento. If you want that classic Italian vibes, you gotta go Suspiria. It's, I yeah. mean, it's, a, it's, it's one of the best ever made. And visually, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's cinematography, everything. It's a quality movie. Moving on, my number three, you can't, you can't go like the whole month of October without watching this. We got, we're talking Beetlejuice, Tim Burton's, um, it's everything you want in a Halloween movie. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's, that's all I need to say. All right. My number two pick, it's, you can't, it's Halloween. Mm -hmm. This is the quintessential <laughs> Halloween movie. Yeah. Put it on when your kids are coming to trick or treat. Turn the lights low, and every time someone knocks on the door, you get a little jolt. Yeah, it's a classic. It's it's you, you can't go without watching Halloween. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then my number one because I love it so much. I'm gonna go with Hellraiser, and this is this fits the vibe of Halloween perfectly. But also, I think it's a little slept on. I think people don't remember how good it was, and yeah, just just give it a, give it a rewatch or give it a watch if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's somehow subtle and in the body horror genre. Yeah. It's 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 a great film. Yeah. And I think uh, we both agree that our number one pick mm -hmm. for a movie that you need to watch this Halloween is How Soon. <laughs> this movie Let's get this in here. is a absolute bomb. Yeah. Um, we started watching a bunch of foreign horror movies this year just for fun. Kind of the COVID thing to do, you know? And uh, this is our favorite. We have a whole list of uh, like numbered off favorites, and this is just sits above the list. It's not even at number one. It's just above it. Yeah. You just need to watch it. It's a it's a it's full blown experience. Yeah, you, like love it or hate it, you'll never forget this movie. Yeah. So now you guys got some good movie recommendations. Let's take it to Chef Mattress in the kitchen. He's gonna he's gonna give you something to munch on while you're watching. Good movie recommendations, but I would have gone with What's Eating Gilbert Grape. But the real question is, who's eating Chef Mattress's spooky cake? <laughs> What's going on you guys? Chef Mattress. This is my segment of the Halloween special. Today we're going to be making a spooky cake, a recipe that Martha Stewart and Betty Crocker collaborated on to bring us some wonderful spooky vibes this Halloween. So the ingredients we're going to need to do this spooky cake, we have some angel food cake mix, eggs, butter, sugar, cherries, some frosting, preserves, and water. We're also going to need a mixing bowl, a deep cake pan, measuring cups, spatula, and a whisk. So first we're gonna add 3 fourths cups of water and then sprinkle our egg white mixture over the top. We're gonna give that a little whisk real quick and then we'll add our second flour mixture. 
We're gonna go ahead and whisk this until we get some nice stiff peaks. Now that we have our stiff peaks, we're gonna go ahead and add our flour mixture. Fold that in real nicely. Give the old pan a quick spray real quick. And then go ahead and dump that batter in. After you got all of that mixed together, you're gonna to want your oven preheated to 375 and we're gonna put this in on the lowest rack for 40 minutes. While we got that in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and prep our glass shards. So we're gonna start off by adding one cup of sugar, three fourths cup of water, and let that boil until we got a nice golden brown bubbly around the edges. We've reached our golden brown state and now we're gonna go ahead and dump it onto the pan. No parchment no pan spray or anything. We gotta work quickly here. Now that we're all done, we're gonna throw this in the freezer, maximizing our cooling time. We still got a few minutes on our cake left, so we're gonna go ahead and make all of our frosting. Okay, so now we're gonna dye some frosting. I'm gonna do red for the lips, Sam will be doing blue for the eyes, and then Brady will be doing yellow for a more fleshy color on the cake. All right, uh, Let's get into it. All right, so we got our frosting done. We've each got the shade that we want to, uh, to really uh, nail this face here. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna set these down and we're gonna go check on our cake, see if it's about done. Okay, so our cake's finished along with our glass garnish. And I can't say, I've ever seen a more perfect cake than this. Whoa, this turned dude. out exactly how we wanted it to. So we're going for a Frankenstein face, and uh, we actually decided halfway through we're just not gonna fill it. Cause you know what, Frankenstein doesn't need any filling. Um, let you you rip up some glass pieces. I'll I'll take a trimming on this, and Sam just look pretty. In life, when things don't when things don't work out for you, just you hit it with like the primal, the the gorilla style. You just gotta go at it. You just gotta go at it primal. I'm about to hit you guys with a time lapse. Here we go. Here we go. Here we, go. Here we, go. we got a glass beads right here. That's some discernible glass. Let's rest these up here. We got some glass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we didn't get shit really, but we got some. All right, you guys, so now we got our, our beautiful cake trimmed up here, and then we got a, a few glass shards out of this sheet tray that yeah. we made. Very easily, I'm gonna. Yeah. You only wanna get a few out of it, you know? Yeah, you don't wanna, you yeah. don't wanna overkill it with the, with the gimmicks, you know? You wanna yeah. be here for the cake. All of this, it, it can't be used. These ones specifically, we need to pick that because they yeah. have that dirt color to them. Makes yeah. it look real. All right, so you got all the trim off. And you got this nice flat um, piece. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a level of skin. And then we're gonna figure out a way to do lips and eyes. So I think I speak for everyone and everyone watching. Uh, why does this suck so much? Two cups of powdered <laughs> cheese. <laughs> so I got the skin done here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and work on the lips. Brady taking it back with the uh, second grade finger <laughs> painting. <laughs> this is the primal style, let me tell you. <laughs> At the middle lip line, you're gonna wanna give it a little crease, right? So you don't wanna get any yellow in there, so. What do you use a, a knife? No. So that's the bottom lip, you know? Now we're gonna, have to, now we're gonna attack on the top one, you know? So if I'm gonna, let me get rid of that real quick. So let me, uh, all right. <laughs> so we got the top lip. Enough fun and games, you know what I mean? Time to get into the nose. <laughs> All right, so uh, for the nose, we're gonna have to use a little bit of the extra trim, right? So this is why I'm talking about the intentional divot. You got you got a little stuff to work with, right? So, well, I mean, what's a nose to you, right? That's a nose, right? Right, and then give it. That's a nose, right? So we're gonna chuck it on. All right, so um, so now we're just doing the 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 fragments. You know, what I mean, we got to do the top top cartilage, something like that. Okay. We're not done yet, because you can't forget about the middle cartilage. You think of the bridge of the nose, is the most important part. We're gonna slide that guy in there. 
A lot of people say, oh, it doesn't look like Frankenstein at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what makes this cake unique? It has, it's not just 2D, you know, I mean, you, got the, you got the 3D nose. Let's give, him, let's give him some eyes, you know? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit more of this trim, right? We're gonna give some brows. All right, see if these are toasted, right? Perfect, you don't need to do anything to them. That's a brow. So um, now you got the eyebrows and the lips and the nose and it's really starting to look like Frankenstein. So um, we just gotta, we gotta, you know, get our elbow grease in there a little bit more. We gotta get these eyes out. And he kind of looks like an androgynous sex god. <laughs> <laughs> androgynous. All right, so for the eyes, we're going back to the trim. We're gonna cut out little pieces of eye, right? But okay. this time, put it put on the left and right side. Yeah, yeah. So this time, so you go for the toasted eyebrow, then you go for the white, the white underbelly, right? So you take some of this. So now we're here with another one of our expert cake decorators, Sam, and he's um, right now dyeing the uh, glass shards, which normally you would use a, a thicker syrup, but we found grenadine, so it's yes, a little sir. thin blood. Here's nothing. So when I decorate my cakes, I like to think about it like as like what happened to this guy. So I imagine uh, Frankie was cruising down the interstate and he just got in a, a gnarly crash and he just kind of just kind of get, gets just just ever so slightly peppered with some some glass shards. I think it's a it's a tough one. You hate to see it, but and you know the real dangers of not wearing your seatbelt. Your your eyes go through. It's so spooky. It goes through the windshield. Good old fashioned American gore. Okay, so now we're finished decorating and it's time for the best part, which is the reveal. So here we go, we're gonna cut into this. A good butter knife, the sharpest butter knife. Now look at this. Look at that perfect cake. That's a spooky cake if I've ever seen one. We gave you some terrifying movie recommendations and a very spooky cake recipe. But now, let us take you back to 1988 with a home movie brought to you by the boys at Enfuego. For your consideration, The Space Cadet. I bet you're wondering what these boys are playing. Well, they're playing a little game by the name of Wrecking Ball. Bro, did you catch that new Rolling Stones article in the Rolling Stones? The name of the game is to get the ball over the rail. But like with everything else in their lives, these boys just don't quite get it. No, dude, but did you go to that Weird Al Yankovic concert last night at the Apollo? It's a no holds barred winner take all, first to three, win by two. No, I heard about the FM waves, though. My oh boy Chunky Tegan and the Wolf are teasing my man Yank's new parody, Fat. Dude, that is so guys, totally, incredibly, monolite. Where'd you get that TV? Oh. Oh. oh! We got it from a voodoo wizard in his hut, <coughs> behind Ricky's diner. He's having a yard sale. He told us we could get it if we paid a, a grave price. Yeah, he's going through like a totally gnarly divorce and yeah, he said he could have the TV for like 20 bucks. But he also said something about like it being like a space time. But nah, bro, or... nah. We're just gonna, we're gonna use it to play N Nintendo. Yeah. 
One, two, one, two, three, go. Space Cadet, did you even mean to come through our TV? Yeah, like, like, we can most certainly not take you to our leader, but we might have some Reese's Pieces kicking around somewhere if you want them. No, my human friends. My teleporter rays midichlorians must have miscalculated as they were passing through the hydro collider, sending me through space and time, which is also known as the Billy D. Williams zone, shooting me out of your TV, little buddies. Whoa! Wait, that begs the question though, are you a future alien? Or are you just from the future? I'm, I'm both, I'm a future alien. I'm, I'm an alien from the future. But, you're so similar to us. Yeah, I, I kind of find it perplexing that you speak the same language as us, dude. Like, there's hundreds of different languages just no, on no, Earth. No, he, yeah, he's definitely just from the future. I'm stationed up in the Gamma Quadrant of Sector 4 as a member of the Elite Universe Protection Unit of Space Ranger Corps. The people in Gamma Quadrant Sector 4 have access to all languages in the multiverse. So, you've never been to Earth at all? No. I came to protect the galaxy from threat of invasion of the evil Emperor Zerg, sworn enemy of the Galactic Alliance. But like, where'd you get those shoes? I'm starting to think this guy is just from the future. Yeah, I don't think he's an alien at all. He's just from the future. That's what I've been saying. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, just to clarify, you're not an alien from the future. You're just from the future. Yeah, he's not an alien no, at all. I'm, he's I'm just space from forward. the future. Okay. Emperor's... <sighs> all right, you guys got me. I'm just your average run-of-the-mill man from the future. My name's Matt. I'm from the year 3019, and I live in this very garage. That's totally radical, dude! You should've just told us that in the first place! Yeah! yeah. Well, uh, to be honest, I really wanted you guys to like me, so I made up a story about being a space ranger. Being from the future is cool enough. I mean, we don't know anyone from the future. Well... Being from the future isn't really cool in the future. We forgive you, bro! These boys are about to take a trip through space and time. Huh. They just don't know it yet. Sometimes it takes seeing Saturn's moons and Jupiter's rings to understand your role in the universe. Over the course of one afternoon, these boys and the space cadet will see vast ancient treasures tackle death-defying stunts, and travel through time itself. But the real treasure is a lifelong friendship they will form. This is their story. Here you go, man. Thank you, but, but honestly, uh, I'm here for that. Whoa, that thing's still there in the future? Yeah, that was, that was here before we moved in. I know. That's the monolith. But really, I haven't eaten in like negative a thousand years. Ruiz! Thanks, dudes. I haven't had a meal this good in forever. I don't have enough to pay you back, but you can have what I have on me. Mondo? We used paper money in the past. Yeah, the future is so wild and crazy. You guys are so zany. 
I don't know about this, guys. I don't like the sound of what the future. A, what other radical things are there to do in the past? Bro, Loki, I got a board in the trunk. Sick, dude. Bro, Loki, he looks like the exact archetype of an 80s skater. Yeah, it's kind of uncanny. I've been here before. We just gotta keep going that way. No way. We're gonna get lost. What? We can just like follow the North Star if we get lost. But it's daytime. Fine, then we can like see what side the tree the Moscars are on. How do you even know how to do that? His grandpa was a Boy Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't think Matt gets it. I'm sorry, but the Boy Scouts are a non-profit organization. No, no it's not that. Uh, What's Moss? <laughs> what? Never mind. J just forget it. Moss is a plant that grows in dark, wet, cold places. So the back of a tree is where it grows, where the sun doesn't shine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <Wait. laughs> you don't know what Moss is? Uh, guys, I need to tell you something, but we should probably sit down. Okay, uh, over here. Wait, so he knows what the Boy Scouts are? <laughs> Matt, what's going on, broski? Okay, you guys have to promise that you'll hear me out. I like you guys a lot, and I feel like I've been carrying this weight around for too long. Go for it. Yeah, sure, dude. Over the next thousand years, the world doesn't become the perfect utopia that I've made it out to be. I knew it! As time goes on, people kind of start to lose interest in one another. It started gradually at first, but day by day, people spent a little more time stuck inside of their technological fantasy. People stop going outside or even saying hello to one another until before anyone realized, people didn't really talk to one another anymore. Well, in person at least, but it didn't really matter. Why doesn't that matter? That sounds like totally not cool. Yeah, not cool, not cool. By that time, overpopulation had gotten so bad that most of the land on earth was pushed out by housing and shopping centers. The more the city pushed out, the less room there was for nature. The birds were driven out of their habitats and were replaced with government drones. Technology had gotten so advanced, people could have anything in the world projected right inside of their heads. They can see, taste, or feel anything real or imagined. So there was no need to meet new people, or travel, or even go outside. I remember when I was young, my grandma had a picture of a little flower. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I would have dreams of finding a seed in the old vegetable cans, then scrape up enough dirt off of the potato rations to grow a little plant of my own, the perfect gift of life in the concrete wasteland. Whoa! Why are you telling us this now? Yeah, you could have told us back home when we were in the garage. Yeah. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I, I had to make sure that you guys were cool before I told you who I really was. My name's Matt and I'm just from the future, but I'm what's known as a, a time surfer. I left my time machine back at your garage, but there's only a few hundred of them that exist. Why'd you even come here? Don't you have a family in your time? I never had much of a family. My mom died when I was young and my dad was working all the time. My grandma pitched in when she could, but it's hard, you know? 
She used to tell me that she loves me more than all of the oceans combined, but it's kind of funny. How is that funny? Because I've never seen more water than a bathtub at the same time. So now, I surf the Timnar, desperately trying to feel the simple loving touch of the human spirit. Come on, I know a place you guys. So what do you guys think? This has been the most fun I've ever had. I can't thank you guys enough for showing me such a good time, but I need to keep moving on. And I want you guys to come with me. I can't go to the future. Chunky Tegan and the Wolf keep saying that the Bay City Rollers might drop a new album. I can't miss it. I just restructured my 20 year mortgage. I don't know guys, what do we really have here to live for? Who would even care if we weren't here tomorrow? Everyone fears the unknown. Imagine for a moment a place you can do whatever you want. You have no parents, no jobs, no worries. On every step in the history of mankind, there have been opportunities that have been wasted because people are afraid to make that last leap of faith. Your entire lives, you guys have called things Mondo. But have you ever taken a second to consider you guys could be Mondo? Oh. This guy is so whimsical. But if we are gonna take that leap of faith, we need to get prepared. How is it snowing? Yeah. I knew this might happen. The Billy D. Williams zone's collapsing. We gotta go, now. But like, it's like cold. Can we like, change? Yeah, this is a lot more practical. Wait, that's not doing it. Yo, check it out. Yo, now check it out. What? Yo, yo, check it out. Yo, yo, uh, check it out, yo, it's Brady and Sam. Okay. Listen up, don't make me tell you again. All right. And I'm the space cadet, you know who I be. I'm the illest one alive, coming out your TV. Woo. I started out a small fry from the city. Mm. No one showed me love, nobody showed me no pity. No pity. Started time traveling to find a connection, but all these whack MCs got the pit of aggression. aggression. What? What's his name? That's right. I'm the space cadet. Ooh, what's right. his name? That's right. I'm the space cadet. What's right. his name? That's right. I'm the space cadet. Yeah. Right. Say it right. 